guys, welcome back. Um, today we're going to be talking about the US VC uh, 90 watt CO2 laser, and I'm going to be hooking up the water chiller. Again, yeah, if you if you're looking at this laser, yes, it does come with um, a CW 3000 series, what they call a chiller, which is this one here is still in the box. Uh, it does come with that one, but um, if you do your research on it, a lot of people say. Well, actually, it's not actually a chiller. It's just a, a basically a radiator. So it will never get the temperature below what your room temperature is, but it'll keep it at that temperature constantly. So that's not what I wanted to use. I wanted to use an actual water chiller. So I went out and I went to a uh, website, Vivor, and I bought their 5200 industrial chiller. It's a DZ5200. Uh, LS dash QX uh, from Vivor. Uh, it was delivered yesterday. I didn't have time to hook it up, so I'm going to go ahead and hook it up now and uh, bring you guys along with me. Um, so, let's see. Again, we have the 5200. It is an actual chiller. It has a an actual refrigerant unit on the inside. Um, on off switch, input output has uh, filters here. Let's see if I can get this off. On both sides <laughs> okay that's better as actual this is the water tank here as a compressor back here and has some coils in the back back here as a filter on this side it also has, I'm not even going to try to put it off again like I did that time it also has another filter on this side and it tells you to uh, clean your filter every 15 to 30 days for a good cooling performance. Um, it also has a water fill spe uh, spout up here at the top. I'm gonna fill that up with uh, two bottles of, well, however much it takes. I think it's like a little over a bottle and a half of distilled water. I'm gonna put a little Dawn dish detergent in there as per uh, Louisiana um, hobby guys suggestions. If you're not familiar with him, please check his channel out, especially for light burn applications. Oh my God, he's he's he has a he has a great teaching voice. <laughs> I'll say that, and he explains a lot of things in light burn. Uh, so it has a fill indicator here, an inlet, and an outlet. It also has an alarm outlet here and an AC plug. The alarm outlet I don't see a lot of people use, but on this machine here, it actually has a cable for the alarm outlet. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect that and see what it does. If it gives me any trouble, if not, I'm probably not gonna use it, but I'll see how it goes. I'm gonna connect it because they put it on there. Um, so let's go ahead and get this put in this place and start connecting the hoses. Before I go to connect the hoses, the hoses, the hose came from, came with the CO2 laser, not with the chiller. Um, I also bought these, uh, they're uh, 11 millimeter, 716 inch spring bands. Uh, instead of using zip ties, I'm gonna use those. So I have four of them, I'm gonna put them on each end. And to connect this, you're gonna connect the inlet of the chiller that I showed you in the back to the outlet of the CO2 laser and the outlet of the CO2 laser to the, I'm sorry, and the inlet of the CO2 laser to the outlet of the chiller so it's pretty simple setup I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get these hose clamps on here and um, uh, get it put in this place get it put in where I wanted to sit at okay so here we are in the back of the unit this is the co2 unit and you have at the top the water inlet and the water outlet at the bottom on the two barbs uh, also on this side, again, we have the water protection uh, cable, which is this one. I'm going to also connect that to the back of the chiller, alarm outlet, and we have the inlet and the outlet on the right. Inlet on the left, outlet on the right. Um, we're going to go ahead and connect these two. I think I should have enough. Sorry, I don't know what I have y'all looking at. I'm going to go ahead and connect these two. 
and um, I'll be right back. Okay, so now I hope the sound is better. <laughs> I remember to put on my mic, my lapel mic. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that. So, okay, now we have the inlet connect to the outlet and the outlet connected to the inlet of the CO2. I also have connected, I'm sorry to have y'all at these crazy angles. Um, I also have the sensor protection connected to the back of the unit here. And I don't have the power on yet because I'm going to add water to it before I put the power on. So, the other thing that came with the unit is the power cable. It also came with uh, two clamps of its own and a spare fuse. It came with this connector, which is the identical connector to what my CO2 laser has on that uh, protection line. So we're going to go ahead and fill this up. Uh, two gallons of uh, Parents' Choice distilled water. Well, these are at Walmart. And um, I'm going to fill it up. And I think it's going to take about a bottle, maybe a gallon and a half close to a gallon and three quarters uh, of the other bottle. So we're going to go ahead and fill this up and get ready to plug it in. Oh, I'm also going to add, if I didn't say it already, a couple of, ca uh, couple of capfuls of bleach. And as per, like I say, uh, LA Hobby Guy, a uh, couple of drops of non-dish detergent, which is supposed to help with keep keeping the bubbles down inside of your laser tube. Uh, you don't want any bubbles up in there, so they say the Dawn dish detergent. A couple of, uh, couple of capfuls is going to lubricate the inside of that glass tube, and it should keep the bubbles down. So we shall see. Okay, so I've just filled the tank up. Um, let's see here. If you can see the line, let me get my flashlight. I filled it uh, just. A little bit below the fill line. I'm actually going to put a little bit more in there because once it fills the tube up, it's going to go down a little bit also. So I'm going to put just a little bit more water in there and get it just above that yellow fill line. Okay, I think that did it. Just above the fill line. And uh, I dropped, let's see. Couple of drops of Dawn dish detergent in there. This is what I had and the bacterial. And it's gonna give it an orange scent. So it should help. <laughs> and I put some couple of capfuls of uh this totally awesome bleach in there. And as far as the water, yeah, completely took this gallon and uh just about all of this gallon here. I say about 80% of it. Um just a <laughs> just a little side note because I thought it. I thought the water meter wasn't working, the uh, little water level line. I poured a whole gallon in there before it even started registering how much water was in there. So it kind of threw me off a little bit. It wasn't until I started adding the second gallon that you could see the water level coming up. So don't let that deter you. Should be fine. Um, I'm going to go ahead and cap this thing off, man, and uh, plug it up and check for leaks. Cross my fingers. All right, so I wanted to talk about the parameters first because you have to set this up before you um, plug it in. I mean, before you power it. Well, you have to set it up. So what I want mine to be is at a constant temperature. I don't want it to fluctuate. I want it to hold the temperature and not go beyond, below another temperature. So the laser is recommended, and this is all going to be in Celsius. The laser is recommended to run between 15 degrees Celsius and 25 degrees Celsius. So I'm going to set mine to no lower than 15 and no higher than 18. I think it's 10 degrees Celsius. I may be wrong. Maybe 10 degrees Celsius and 25 degrees Celsius. Um, so I'm going to set mine to right at a happy medium. That's going to be uh, 15 degrees Celsius, no lower, and no higher than 18 degrees Celsius. So that's a three degrees Celsius um, window. And it'll crank on at 18 and it won't go below 15 degrees Celsius. I live in Georgia. Um, so for this, 
this winter for New Year, for Christmas Eve uh, got extremely cold, as most of the country did. Uh, if you guys remember, this was um, if you're watching this at a later date, this was in 2022, and this is January 2023 now. So yeah, we had a pretty rough weekend of winter weather. Uh, I remember reading a lot of stuff on Facebook. A lot of their people's was um, their CO2 tube were burst was bursting and they tried to put free uh antifreeze in it boat antifreeze and all kinds of stuff man i was hearing all of the horror stories and i was just like wow so i'm just glad mine isn't here yet <laughs> because i'd hate to get it and then a week later i burst my tube here oh my god that would have been bad but um if when you get your uh, your your chiller your uh industrial chiller is going to come with this book and this book is gives you the parameters and it gives you uh, how you set your thermostat um i don't i'm going to go ahead and set the thermostat now and i've already given you my parameters um I, I suggest you guys go ahead and read over this book when you get it uh i don't want to be the one to tell you how to do it because i'm not a professional i'm learning this for the first time as well so that's why i'm kind of hesitant but i do want to show you the information Know that it is there and it does come with it with the chiller and um you guys read over this carefully because it's very important i mean this is your heart of your machine this is your thermostat i mean i'm sorry this is your uh, your co2 laser it's the whole reason why you bought the machine so don't skimp on this part man make sure you read it thoroughly understand what's going on and don't just take somebody's word for it that that tells you on a you on a on a youtube video all right so i'm going to go ahead and get this programmed and I'll be right back. Okay, let me get my little <laughs> my little knee saber out of the way. That's my stool because I had to get down pretty low for that one. All right, so I've just programmed the chiller. Uh, again, I'll let you know my parameters that I went with. Um, I had to change the minimum to from 20, and I changed it all the way down to 15. Um, I changed my constant to I had to take it down from, I think it was at 25 by the factory, and I took it down to 18. So it's going to stay in between the parameters of 15 degrees Celsius and 18 degrees Celsius. Um, right now it's running normal. It's chilled. It's already ran and been running for about eh, maybe five minutes. And it's at 17.3 uh, degrees Celsius. That blinking light means that it's in constant mode. I'm not mistaken is the name of it um let's see uh it has a again a water alarm so if i clamp this you hear the alarm go off and let's you know it has an obstruction of some sort i couldn't get both of them in but um i've checked my tube and i have to say the dawn dish detergent i think works well i see no bubbles absolutely none whatsoever um so i have to say that might be one air bubble right there but other than that i don't see anything yeah that was one air bubble and i i just squeezed there was one air bubble here i just squeezed the outlet tube oops sorry about that i just squeezed the outlet tube and i saw the air bubble immediately cycle back through um so that's the only air bubble i can see let's see if i can see anything underneath here nope i think that's it man i think we're bubble free here uh that's spectacular okay i've checked for leaks um grab my flashlight here yeah man sorry guys i couldn't put you on a tripod here it's just a it's so cramped up in this area i can't really get anything but i don't feel anything there's nothing wet here that's a stain on my concrete so that's not a leak uh, and i didn't feel anything over here at the chiller side so i'm gonna call this a success um let's see what else do i need to do before i can finally crank this machine up um uh, that's the water chiller. Only thing I need to do now, I have my fan back here. Um, grab that flashlight again. I have my 
air holes in my fan back here mounted to the base of the wall and the hose is going out towards my garage door over here and uh, that's where I'm going to cut a hole into the garage door and I'm going to um, put the the uh, the um, whatever it's called <laughs> the access for my um, air hose to go out of that, that hole in the garage. I already have that part and my hose saw just came about an hour ago. I had to buy a six inch hose saw and um, it just came about an hour ago. So that's my next mission. Uh, we have tube, we have water going through the tube, we have the chiller hooked up, we have the air hooked up. And now I just need to finish up the exhaust and exhaust it outside. And that's a wrap, people. Um, all the little odds and ends will be like LED lights and uh, some neodymium magnets. Um, but, you know, that, that I don't need any of that to make it operate. Um, so, yeah, that's a wrap. I'm getting so excited. So follow with me. Uh, I'll be back with this in this journey again. And um, once I drill the hole here and uh, we're going to fire this thing up today. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Appreciate it.